Hey, it's Candia Raquel, founder of Centro de Poder. You are at the Essential Sessions podcast, and today we have a very special guest. This is Michael Landau. Welcome. So happy to have you here. Thank you, Candia. Good to be here. Thank you for the invitation. My pleasure. And Michael is an entrepreneur. He's a CEO of Persistent Growth. He is also a Feldenkrais method practitioner. He graduated from the renowned Jerusalem One training in Israel from his homeland. And then he was a teacher at the conservatorium in Vienna for a long time. And then he moved to Chile to teach at the University of Valparaíso. And he's a very interesting person. So Michael, tell us, um, what is the thing that you like the most about the work that you are doing in persistent growth? Uh, persistent growth came out, it was invented, let's say, in the with the pandemic. Um, I, just about a year before the pandemic, I decided to leave my musical career. I've had enough after 30 years of teaching and playing the piano. And I decided to dedicate myself to Feldenkrais. And uh, all of a sudden, it moved online. I stopped seeing people. I was at home in front of the computer. And I wanted to teach Feldenkrais. So. The group classes work pretty nicely. You, they work with the verbal instructions. I can do this on screen. People can lie at home on their map and do the class. It, I, I'm still doing that. But um, I was at that time busy with figuring out how to be an entrepreneur, how to be independent, how to organize my life and organize my time. And I was really, um, I, I found out that I had no idea how to manage my time. Mm. So I was into habits. I was exploring my habits. How, what is it that I do every day? How do I um, manage the, the repetitive things that I have to do, like work and yes. have a family and eat and sleep? Yes. And I, I, I was really lost with it because I've been an employee all of my life. Yes. So persistent growth is kind of a an amalgam of uh, habit creation that I've been working with and the Feldenkrais method. So my idea with it was to um, to turn mindful movements, which is what we do in the Feldenkrais method, into a daily habit. Yes. This was my idea. It is not something that is uh, that I've heard before. I mean, people do a Feldenkrais class once in a while. Yes. It is, you have to take an hour. It takes time. Before the pandemic, you had to go to a studio of the teacher and lie on the floor. So it's it requires time, and it is not something that people usually do every day. I, even though it's my work, I don't manage to do a full class every day. Yes. It's a time issue. It is it just doesn't work this way. And and I don't know if it's meant this way. For most people it doesn't work this way. So I thought to uh turn it into a daily habit, it had to be much reduced. So time shouldn't be an issue. Yes. Nobody's going to dedicate one hour a day to um to do a, a daily practice. Yes. So that's that's the basic idea of persistent growth. Take an a mindful movement, reduce it to a, to the very essence, so that something very small happens within three minutes. And I found out that it, three minutes is enough for something to happen. A tiny change, a little shift. You do this every day, and things happen over time. You do it every day and things happen over time. I really like this idea of taking mindful movement to our everyday living through a practice, be it three minutes, and make it regular. Because after 10 days, 
you get a uh, half an hour practice and after months and years then it it amounts to a significant part of time or or part of of your life rather than falling into an imposition of i have to do this because it, it's my duty to do mindful movement and then you if, if one approaches mindful movement through through this like idea of obligation i think the the same frame will get in the way of of mindful movement and i am very curious to to ask you um about the feldenkrais approach to the experience because sometimes um, here in Centro de Poder, we work with sensuality and pleasure, widely understood as simply sensing pleasure through the senses and expressing that pleasure completely free from inhibition in your movement. And it's something that I see in Feldenkrais and I see maybe in some kinds of dances. And it's something that we do naturally when we are enjoying a fruit cake or a cup of tea or a kiss with the beloved or whatever. But in the moment that pleasure becomes an obligation, it it's almost as if pleasure becomes doomed and the experience cannot be grasped. So and that's that's why I think that many approaches out there about sensuality, even sexuality and pleasure doesn't work because they have they have indeed the good part of, of the practice that you have to practice, but they have a frame of, of imposition that gets in the way. So how, how do you work with awareness? How have you find a way to make the practice of awareness a discipline without becoming an obligation without becoming like now I am gonna become the most aware people in the world or you know <laughs> yeah yeah I, I really like your approach in in Centro de Poder the, um, the, uh, that you that you put an emphasis on pleasure I mean sensuality has, has become a product in in our uh, civilization and um, um, I'm I'm not an expert on sensuality, but I I do remind my students, and I find that I have to remind myself again and again to look for what feels good. Yes, because we are really trained out of it. We are trained to ignore the the signals we get from our body and. Um, um we we uh we learn to try harder to push against the wall to uh, um to forget about our pleasure to forget about um having a good time doing whatever it is that we're doing and um, so i find the the approach of the feldenkrais method re and and of your focus is particularly really revolutionary it is um, taking something that is should be quite obvious and part of uh, of normal life. Like, do you like what you're doing? If not, why do it? Exactly. This, exactly. This is, um, kind of a, a general approach that that should be present in in everything we do, and it's not. And we really learn not to do it. This is a learning process. A, a baby, a little child, when it's playing around and moving and learning and trying things, if it doesn't feel good, they won't do it. They'll just stop and do something else. It makes sense, doesn't it? But it, it's totally out of our cultural um, way of thinking. So in, <clears throat> in your approach and in persistent growth and in my Feldenkrais classes, I find that I really have to remind myself and my students again and again does it feel good are you trying too hard is it is it doing you any good what you're doing now yes. if not don't do it do something else 
yes. find another way. So this is part of the of the routine of our work that we're looking for alternatives that are nicer, more effective, yes. less strenuous. They don't harm you, and they feel good. Yes, yes. It's it's like taking authority, like taking ownership and being authority upon your experience, and also like taking back what what you gave away at a certain moment in life to comply like if you don't work hard you won't get where you want and if you're not a martyr and suffer then you don't deserve your food <laughs> so it, it's like really ingrained and it's exactly the exactly counter to health because with the example that you gave with, with the baby when a baby it's something that tastes mm, yummy delicious it's gonna savor it and swallow it and digest it and the baby when when it tastes something rotten it's gonna spit it we all did it before we got into this frame of Mm, deceptive and and bad education that that you have to to go on a diet even though if you're not enjoying what you're eating and you have to work 18 hours a day because otherwise you are a big loser and that goes against health because we bypass the the symptoms of illness we 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 learn to turn down the volume of the voice that is telling us like stop it you're you're heading to a heart attack and i love how the the work in, in persistent growth has has a discipline to self care and to to self honesty in, in the way in the sense of asking yourself are you trying too hard are you enjoying it or you are not enjoying it so it's like i i even feel like a relief from from saying like okay yeah i have the right i give myself the the authority and the permission to say stop i'm not pushing myself stop i'm not doing something that i am not enjoying but that that takes like creating a space and i feel that that you're nailing it with with persistent growth on making it a habit because we have a habit of self abuse and self exploitation and self whipping i don't know if that's the name but we have treating bad ourselves and i i believe it's key to to make it a practice a discipline to to get in contact with mindful movement and take back the enjoyment of at least those three minutes in life and those three minutes every day are like a seed that you nurture that you water for a persistent growth to start resonating into more areas of your life and you said something that like shocked me positively the other day when we were talking behind the scenes that and you just blurted out that pleasure it's not a goal and i'm like oh, pleasure it's not a goal but how like of course i want to feel pleasure and everyone wants to feel pleasure and that's why we all buy the new iphone the super organic matcha tea and the we want to get into a relation because we are looking for pleasure as a goal but that's the i after thinking i feel that's that's a trap to think that pleasure is a goal that you have to pay on the way of achieving it when it rather is like you say it's 
are you enjoying it or you are not enjoying what you're doing so it's more like pleasure it's it's a way would you tell us a little bit more about this enjoyment that you work in your classes and how this sustains the persistent growth yeah of course we we look for uh, pleasure as um, we have a natural attraction towards things that make us feel good and a kind of an aversion to things that makes us feel bad and this is um this is very ingrained in even the most basic uh, life forms i mean an, an amoeba would uh yes. shy away from from a drop of acid and would yes. go to uh, what is a uh, nutrition so so this is part of our biology yes. very basic yes. So, so it's a byproduct of being connected with our needs. Yes. Our if you needs. think of, if you convert it into a goal, like something that you have to work to get to, you're you're kind of doing something contrary to that um, natural tendency. Like yes. we yes. don't want to work hard, and we know in in our practice that um, that actually when you try less hard when you relax you you can look at it very mechanically when you lower your muscle tone you're more sensitive yes you're more accurate with what you're doing this is something that feldenkrais knew this is like based on a 19th century one of the first um discoveries in um measurable neural <laughs> neurobiology yes yeah they, they've Weber Fechner uh, law that when you reduce muscle tone, you're more sensitive. You notice smaller differences. It is true with uh, with all of our senses. If there is a lot of light, you don't notice a small difference. If uh, in daylight, when somebody lights a candle behind you, you don't know it. When it happens in a dark room, it makes a a huge difference. It's the same principle that um, when when we are tenser, when we are more, when there is more basic uh, stimulus, we become less sensitive. Yes. So and it's the same with pleasure. When you when you try hard to get it, you are less sensitive to it. So you have to try harder. Yes. And the, the stimulus must be huge for you to notice it yes so if you just relax and listen to yourself and uh, and move move in life in a way that is that feels good you have pleasure as a as a constant byproduct it's not something that you have to you have to chase pleasure is a byproduct of the way you move in life it's not something you have to chase definitely um, the way of moving like slowly getting in touch with the with the experience like engaging in life and not shying away from life through the life itself through a bunch of stimulus you know in <clears throat> It reminds me of the other day that I I had the most nasty mm, trash food meal <laughs> that I could imagine. It was a Doritos bag. I don't know if that's the name, but it's like a kind of chips, Doritos. And th those had sliced corn. on it. The, the bag was like cut open. So you had the Doritos. And then corn. And then mayonnaise, cheese, jalapeno chilies, and then Valentina sauce <laughs> with salt and lemon. <laughs> and <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. So that's <laughs> that was an overstimulating experience that made me think like had I had that that meal now and then i would try to to perceive and sense the taste of 
my green tea, my green tea would have tasted like nothing because of the experiential noise of of the Doritos with everything. And same goes with with the food or with um, shopping or with toxic relationships or toxic relationship with your work because having pro like being invested in, in problems sometimes there's no no way out like you find yourself in the situation and you have to work yourself out but oftentimes it's a bad habit like eating Doritos like that it's a bad habit and that repeats and radiates to other areas of the life, like um, like the so-called vicious cycles, <laughs> that a bad habit can grow branches and merge with the other bad habits. And then you have like a spider web lifestyle <laughs> entrenched. And then, I, I feel that something very dangerous about uh, running our life with unexamined habits is the danger of identifying yourself with your habits, like believing that all that you do in your everyday life, that it's not so good for yourself, it's your self-image, it's who you believe that you are and become conditioned by that and then repeat it and something that i believe it's key even right from 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 the persistent growth it's it's almost like a mantra i love it because it's building into a not into a vicious cycle but a virtuous cycle like you have your three minutes of mindful movement with a focus on not pushing yourself too hard, but enjoying the process. And that will grow branches to more areas of growth, creating a mandala of pleasure in your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm already this sounds fun. like a, a good byproduct. <laughs> yeah. Like, like a good byproduct. Would you share with us um, a little something a movement an inspiration something that the sensualists that are watching and listening this podcast can take as as a seed to plant and repeat every day for their persistent growth um well do take one movement and say this is good for you repeat it every day is not really the way that we work what what um we we can do an a sample of yeah something like three minutes may do a very short movement but what you what you said before just um made me think of the main tool that we are trying to develop with persistent growth as a habit or with uh, in our feldenkrais classes we are always trying to develop awareness. Awareness. So first, we use awareness. Awareness is, is a tool to, to listen to yourself, to see what you're doing, to, uh, to notice details. So this is what I mean by mindful movement. It has yeah. to be mindful. It is not um, mechanical. It cannot be mindless. You cannot just repeat a movement because it's good for you. This is not the way we are working. Um, so um, the, the idea of making it into a daily practice is it is a practice of awareness and awareness is a skill that you get better with. So if you take it, if you take the same thing and do it every day, it will lose its sense after a few days. It, it becomes just, a repetition. Become, become mechanical. Yes. So, so I wouldn't suggest do this what we are doing now every day. Do something different every day okay. in this way. Okay, yes. Stop what you're doing, relax, take a look into yourself, stop the rat race, 
the the high level uh, stimulus that we live with constantly in our modern life and uh, and if you just take this time and look at yourself it's the same we do with meditation just stop calm down calm your crazy mind your monkey mind and just let it rest for a moment on something and it can be a different thing every day which is the way we we do it so that it stays interesting and and you develop different possibilities so let's say this is a sample let's, don't repeat this every day let's let's enjoy this sample to get a taste and know about the way of practicing the skill of awareness through persistent growth yeah i'm ready Okay, so you need a chair and you want to sit in front of the chair so that you don't lean back and you hold yourself just normally. Don't try to do anything in particular. Take a second to feel the weight going into the chair through your sitting bones and also the push you get from the chair upwards that allows you to be upright. And now lift your non-dominant arm, let's say, a little above your head, and bring it back down. Don't stretch, and repeat this a few times. For me, it's the right hand, because I'm left-handed. Lift it, and come back. Just feel what happens in your body. I mean, it's not just the arm that is moving. And now also tilt your head the other way. So if you're lifting the left arm, you tilt your right ear a little bit closer to the shoulder. It makes sense. It's like part of the same movement. You just involve your neck. And now you keep going, just do it. Don't try hard, just bring it a little, your hand a little higher than your head. And now feel the ribs on the same side, the side of the arm that you're lifting. So when you lift the arms, the ribs open. And make it, you can exaggerate it a little bit. So you tilt your body sideways and feel the lengthening along the, the ribs. The ribs really open like an accordion. So now, when you feel this, think into breathing in, into this side. When you lift the arm, you breathe into that side. When you bring it down, breathe out. Just keep it going a few more times. It's like you're filling up this accordion half of it the arm that you're lifting. Do it three or four more times. Breathe in, open your ribs, breathe out as they close again. Couple more times. Inhale, exhale. Last time, you tilt your head, you open your ribs to breathe in. You just come back to breathe out. And sit for a moment. And just feel both sides of your chest. Where is your breathing going? Without trying to do anything. So for me, at least, I feel like I have this huge <laughs> lung here and a small lung here. And so like I'm breathing into this side. Something changed. Did you feel any, do you feel any difference between the sides? A wonderful expansion blooming here and the other side feels like a old grape pruned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is an idea. When, when you work on one side, it is more obvious that something changes yes. because something shifts. And this, this was about three minutes. I didn't look at the clock, but yes. it was short, right? So... You do a 
a really short, uh, concentrated exploration with your mind on it, and something shifts. Yes. Okay? So we've been practicing awareness, like trying to uh, direct our mind to what we're, we're doing. It wasn't mechanical. And something little happened. This is it. It's not spectacular, but imagine doing this every day. So you make a tiny shift in different parts, in different things, and at the same time, you're practicing your awareness. You're really getting better at uh, staying focused and yes. also noticing small things. Yes. So this, things. And this, this is the skill that you take into life with you. It's not just these three minutes a day. When you become finer with your uh, inner hearing, shall we call it, the same as ear training. I was a musician. I took ear training classes when I studied, but uh, it kept improving. I hear more details, more... Um, um, I recognize uh, chords, harmony. I, I can recognize intervals. I learned this thing. I improved my hearing. It's not that my ears are better. My brain knows what to do with this information. It's the same with self-awareness. Developing awareness. And it's key to, to realize that is through the little sensations and little changes and not looking for something spectacular, though it can be... A, it is spectacular, like how paying attention to something automatically changes it. But it's not in spectacular in in a marketed way. But my feeling is that is is very singular. It's very unique to you, and it's this approach is very respectful because it's not like a single measure for everyone. Like you just said, lift your arm and that's it. And that was like the the first positive shock of this three minute experience because. As simple as this movement may seem, the challenge for me was to to follow the indication of just leave the arm above your head. And I was like, should I lift it like in ballet or like dramatically? Like, how do I look? Or in, in a Pilates way, like is my scapula gliding and my humerus aligned properly and sideways, is it, is it, is it right or wrong? Because I've been so trained in a corrective way that either you're right or you're wrong. And and you have to fit into a mold of ballet or Pilates or whatever. And this is this is a different approach, a respectful one, because it's about how how you move your arm and how you experience the breathing in the rib cage and how you notice the changes in your body and ultimately the the way that that you develop the skill of awareness and experience the the touch of awareness and I feel that this is very important for everyone, like really, really, really for everyone, like to take back like like this ownership of of your own subjective experience while also sharing it. And yeah, because that's where pleasure is in your sensations, not not in complying with with external norms so yeah super fan of persistent growth and three minutes of awareness every day thank you michael how can we learn more about what you're doing do you have a website uh, yes my website is persistent-growth.com so there's a, a small hyphen persistent hyphen growth.com um, yeah and there you can sign up for my uh, for to get a few samples of these three minute sessions 
So I have a couple of free samples that you get one at each day for three days. So you can have an idea of what is possible. A, a little each, repertoire. Each daily session is different. And I've been going now into the 300s. So the, the, the possibilities are quite infinite. Quite infinite. So go to persistent-growth.com and get your free practices of three minutes of awareness every day. And you have a little repertoire to get started and then dive into the over 300. So you have one for every day of the year. That's fantastic, Michael. Thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. and also for doing this beautiful work of persistent growth. I am fun. Thank you. And thank you for a Centro de Poder <laughs> kind of complementing different areas of life with the same approach. Yes, indeed. And thank you, Centralist, for being here at the Central Sessions podcast of Centro de Poder. If you haven't signed up yet to receive this every week on your email, please go to centrodepoder.com and get yourself subscribed. Until next time, remember to take the time to sense your fire so you can share the flame. <laughs>